Try to get out of here. Well, guys, that was a uh, in girls. That was a quick drive in the coop. Well, I had to head out, head down to my buddy's place down in Plymouth, meet up with him. Yeah, so that's it. This is the 30 coop. I know I did a walk around video of it a while ago, uh, but for some of the newer subscribers, if we're gonna take you guys for a ride in the coop, and I don't know, let you guys kind of experience what I get to experience when I drive this thing. Uh, it certainly is a blast to drive. Uh, it's a driver. It's not perfect. It's already got a few little nicks and scratches here and there, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, nothing I own is perfect, so this kind of just fits right in. But for those who don't know, it's a 30 coupe. Uh, it's been chopped four and a half inches, channeled four inches. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice just cracked there. It's channeled four inches. It is powered by a 1975 small block that came out of a 75 corvette as did the transmission that was in it which was a turbo 400 turbo hydro 400 uh, i removed the automatic transmission and put in an early 70s 
Super T10, so it's an aluminum cased four speed. I bought a Hearst shifter. That's actually a truck shifter. The Hearst truck style shifter because it's taller. I uh, put that in. And the rear suspension is also out of the same Corvette. So you can see the large disc brakes. It's uh, four piston disc brakes. The rear suspension has been modified. So he, Brad Z'd the, the rear suspension. Kind of hard to see because the wheel's on it. But typically this bar, this two link would have gone basically straight back. But you can see it, it kind of raises up. You can see the rear spring there. So this is what holds the rear spring. You can see the rear spring just below it. This is actually a trailer hitch that Brad put on it. He towed a small camper with it. It's got a hideaway, hideaway uh, license plate, or a trailer hitch behind the license plate. The rear tail lights, brake lights are from a late 60s, early 70s Chevy GM pickup or van. I think they were marker lights off a of van. Uh, this is actually the gas tank. This actually came, uh, the, the, the metal came from his, a relative of his. They had a uh, print shop and that gas tank was chrome. But it just kind of weathered poorly and was pretty rusty. So he actually painted it. And then I finished it off with some body filler and kind of cleaned it up a little nicer. Uh, the wheels are hand-built wheels, you know, from Brad. He drilled out the centers. I don't think they're reversed. Yeah, they are. 15-inch um, wheels. The rear tires are G78-15s. I think they're about 30 inches tall. The fronts are Firestone 560-15s. Again, same thing. Brad built the wheels himself. He, uh, he created his own offset uh, and then built tabs, welded tabs on the inside of the wheel so it would accept the Thunderbird center caps. Front frame horns are original Model A. So Brad originally purchased this car from Amesbury, Mass. The body and the frame were $50. He used from here forwards. So the frame is Z'd in the front. It drops down four inches. And it's right, right there at the base of the bottom of the door in the cowl. The car actually has power steering. A lot of people are surprised when they see that. I found an old Magneto at a speed shop close to me. I purchased that. Sent that down to... Pat Mason down at Mason Racing Ignitions down in Pennsylvania. He went through it. He changed the gear. It had a brass gear on it. Uh, but besides that, he put a steel gear on it. It was a, a turnkey, you know, product. I was able to get a really good deal on it. This is the tack drive that comes off of it. So that's on the passenger side. And then I also have a drive, which would have been for fuel injection on the driver's side. You can see it down there. That I have a cap on it. So that would have been a fuel injection drive. So what else? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, I want to say pretty straightforward. It's really not, I suppose. Brad hand built, hand built his own full length front suspension using the very front portion of a Model A wishbone. Cut them off, made his own bat wings, built his own full link, Harley Davidson horn. Uh, F1, Ford F1 shock mounts for the front. Six inch aftermarket drop tube axle from back in the day. The car was built in 1978. It's an original 32. It's an original 32 shell that's been chopped and filled. These grill bars are actually stainless steel welding rod that he ended up welding into it and made his own insert, which is really, really cool. Uh, Smoke Cal custom valve covers. Uh, headers, I don't know what brand the headers are from, but they're pretty funky. They, they fit the car, which is amazing. Again, I don't know exactly where they came from, but they work. Uh, Brad filled the roof. Originally, when Brad built the car, it had a sunroof. Uh, the moon, a moonroof came out of, a, I think, a 60s or early 70s Mercedes-Benz. 
but he constantly had issues with it leaking. So he said he got rid of it and filled it and then put the Naga hide on top. This was white when I purchased the car. I actually spray dyed it, the, the tan, the, the cream color to match the firewall. Door panels. <clears throat> this chrome trim is from a 53 Chevy. The seat is out of a 1975 Ford Pinto station wagon. And that's the back seat out of the station wagon. Everybody always asks and they're pretty, pretty amazed at, uh, at the seat, how well it fits the car. Steering column is a tilting and telescoping column out of a 61 Cadillac. And I know, like I had said, I've shown people this in the past, but this horn in the center turns and then it actually telescopes in. A lot, I let a lot of kids sit in the car. Whenever I go anywhere, if someone comes up and they have kids and they say, get in it, you guys get right in it. And I'll take the steering wheel and I'll adjust it all the way out. And I'll tip it down so the kids can literally just sit in here and pretend like they're driving it. They love it. Uh, I actually started carrying stickers in the car. So I, I give kids stickers whenever I, whenever the kids come in the car and sit down and pretend they're driving. Uh, heavily modified Volkswagen, early Volkswagen pedals. You can see they're staggered. That was the only way that I could get three pedals in the car. I actually found a low car fuel pedal. I purchased that at a swap meet down in Connecticut, Stafford Springs, 10 bucks. I thought it fit right in. So that actually ended up working out great. Steering wheels out of a late seventies Camaro. A cool little knob with a spinning a spinner. Uh, that's actually a playing card out of a, a playing card deck. Brad cut that image out and put it in there. A little pinup. I call her Carol. The car sits about just under three inches off the ground is the lowest point. It's the collector. So every now and then if I'm driving down a bumpy road and I hit a bump, the suspension compresses. I'll, uh, I'll scrape the ground, but it is what it is. Got some two inch pencil tip exhaust tips on it. Uh, you know, I, if I were to be able to crawl into the car and show you guys some of the details under the car, you guys would be pretty surprised. There's a lot going on in this car, but all in all, this is a fun little car. Uh, the car originally came with 94s, Holly 94s. I switched out the 94s and started running 97s on it. I've had great luck with these carbs. No issues since I rebuilt them. My buddy Joe helped me do that. I built this little bracket here to hold my regulator and my fuel pressure gauge. Uh, you can see it's got the, all the old school clamps and stuff on it. So Get these here. So kind of do the car justice when I rebuilt it. So like I said, the car was built originally in 78 and it was driven up until the late nineties. Periodically, not very much. Brad had so many other cars that he built that he drove other cars. This just happened to be the first car he built. So I built, I purchased the car in 2018 and got it to a point where I could drive the car. I could get it to a car show and just enjoy it but i really wanted to put a full speed in it and what i ended up doing is i ended up finding a broken motor mount i'll show you well i don't want to touch anything because it's hot but the bolt holding that motor mount in was sheared off and in order to remove that bolt i had to remove the exhaust in order to remove the exhaust i had to remove the steering in order to remove this link i had to pull out the column and I just kept finding more and more things that I had to remove in order to replace one bolt. So what I ended up doing is I just took the body off the frame. I pulled the body off the frame, hung it from the ceiling in the garage, and proceeded to just completely rebuild the car. The car was flat black, uh, had the red wheels. I, never, I did not repaint the wheels. Those wheels are the same paint that Brad painted way back in the day, uh, in, the late, in 78. And... I uh, put new tires on it. I did all the brakes, rotors, all the bushings and everything in the suspension. Uh, new kingpins. I uh, had the interior redone. A lady named Karen Shepard from Middleborough, Mass, Cape Cod Upholstery. She's kind of known worldwide. She's got interiors and cars that are all across the world. Uh, great lady. Awesome lady. Super cool. Funny. Fun. Uh, she did the interior in the car, so I was just super excited to have her do that. The material was an NOS material that was found in 61 Impalas. It's actually metallic. 
it's hard to see it, but it's actually metallic. And then she surprised me and did some gold, I mean, uh, some chrome piping on the seat, which was a really cool touch. So I ended up just going right through the car. Uh, I mixed my own paint color. Uh, I was thinking about painting the car black, so I bought black paint. I thinking about painting the car white, then I bought white paint. And then I thought, no, I really want to stick with the turquoise on the interior and I want to do something in the grayish green family and I just mixed my own paint and that's the color I came up with. My Instagram name a few years ago or even last year, even I think, yeah, last year was Swap Meet Phantom. So I just call that color Phantom Gray. Everybody comments on the color, they love it. They ask me the paint code, they ask me the name of the paint. There isn't one because I just made it up on my own. Phantom Gray. It's just an all around, just a bitchin' little hot rod. I love this thing and it boogies. I put a pretty hefty cam in it, did a new timing chain, complete gaskets, uh, oil pump. What else did I do to it? Uh, lifters, push rods, rocker arms, did uh, just, uh, just on and on and on. I did everything I could do internally in the motor. Mine is doing the low end. It was fine. The car doesn't smoke at all. It doesn't use any oil. Uh, it's just an awesome little car. So yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna shut up now. I just wanted to take you guys for a quick ride in the coop. All right, I gotta pull the car in the garage now. You be good. She hates the loud noises. Not the easiest thing to get in. All right, everybody, that's it. Thanks for coming along for a little trip in the coop. In the 30 and I'll see you guys soon take care bye bye